What about making your sound better? Alright, so we are now back with another MTFL Studio project where we are going to discuss about its settings and configuration. So here you'll learn about how you can customize stuff here because as we all know, FL Studio is a wonderful, wonderful DAW that you can customize a lot of things according to your taste. It's very conducive to produce with because you can color stuff. It's so beautiful in the eye. You can change how you can perceive things with your eyes, not just with your ears because this is a music production software. You're supposed to change the way other people perceive the music because you're mixing it you're changing the patterns so you'll also learn about how you can set up your audio driver and your MIDI so as you can see here at the very left corner you can see that there are th there are menus right there is this menu right here this panel right here so these four right here file edit add patterns are mainly for adding and saving. For example, I want to add a certain instrument, I can just go here, right? Add plugins and will automatically be here on the channel rack. Same goes with the effect. And the pattern right here, the setting right here, and the setting right here is the same. They just made it more visible here. So you can see it a lot quicker. And you can also arrange this toolbar right here. Right, you can choose to add a separator right here. If you added this, you can choose to add things. You can choose to remove things. You can choose to expand, elongate things, right? For example, this right here. Only a few people know how to do this in FLC U20, by the way, because I see a lot of producers, a lot of new producers that aren't touching this, or maybe they just don't want it to change. Maybe they're used to that. Let me, I have my own setting and I will show it to you later. Right here, you can remove this if you want to, but this one is quite important. So I suggest not to remove this because this is the time. You have to monitor the time, you have to monitor the bar, right? So you can add, add stuff such as an alternative key for control, Alt and Shift. It's kind of like an alternative function for your keyboard whenever you don't want to press it or maybe your control alt or shift is damaged then you can use that as an alternative or in layman's term a workaround so here we'll start with the view because oh i forgot to discuss about the file of course the file is right here just like any other software that has a file menu you have an option to save you have an option to open a previous project start a new one and what's good in FL is it has this feature that you can see all of the uh, the 10 previous projects that you have worked with, with the software. So, okay, so let's go back to view. So here in view, you have the option to remove the playlist from the, you know, from the screen. So you have the option to remove the channel rack also. So this setting right here, view this first section right here and this strip right here this series of functions right here are the same so again they just made it more visible to the eye and for you guys to see it a lot quicker so they put it here okay so in this view we, al we also have the option to arrange our windows right we have the option to save this current layout save we have the option to use FL Studio's tablet alternate preset. There you go. Now let's just go back because I'm not used to this setup. Okay, custom. Okay. Also, under the view menu, you also have the option to change the background color, right? For example, you're a person who loves pink, so you can change it to color pink right it's not a girly stuff by the way pink is actually a manly color a lot of a lot of people just perceive it perceive it as a womanish color or a girly color or a gayish color but no it's not like that me personally i love pink so we'll use pink for now also you have an option to change the background with a picture 
For example, I have a few pics of my puppies at home and they inspire me to make music. So there you go. So, okay, so let's go back to view. What else should we discuss here? Okay, nothing more. So under the options menu, you have the media settings, audio settings, general settings, file settings, and manage plugins. So first we have the MIDI settings, right? So right now I have my World Easy Key 25 Key MIDI plugged in. So as you can see here, I'll remove this, okay. Right, so I'll just plug it in again. So by default, FL Studio's MIDI settings will look like this, right? Oops, it will look like this. So if you don't have a MIDI keyboard yet, maybe you can invest one or you can just use this icon right here. You can use your computer keyboard as a MIDI keyboard. So yeah, so once you once the MIDI keyboard is detected, right? Once the MIDI keyboard is detected, you can just click there, enable, and there you go. You can now use your MIDI keyboard. You can click the instruments that you want to control and there you go. And another thing about the MIDI settings is that you should click this auto accept detected controller. Because for example, you have you just bought a new controller, right? And you, you plug it in. It's a plug and play controller, so you don't need to install any additional drivers. So what you'll do is click this and the next time you you plug a new controller it will automatically use that so yeah that's how it works and let's go to the audio settings right now i'm using fl studio seo because again i assume that you just installed your fl and it will look like this it will definitely look like this and I have to mention that the default template for fl uh, for the newly installed FL is this right here, the basic with limiter. But later on, we would want to use this empty template to start our project if we're about to arrange our song, right? We, we don't need this four elements right here. Okay, so now let's go back to the audio settings. So in the audio settings, you have the option to choose your driver, right? Right now, I'm using Apple Studio SEO, but I do have a... I audio interface. I have two audio interfaces by the way. I have the Focusrite and the M Audio. So if I have my Focusrite plugged in, I can just click this. If I have my M Audio plugged in, I just click this. Right? Oh, let's go back to the MIDI because I forgot to mention something. Some keyboard has output. For example, the Roland XPS 10. You can use it as a MIDI controller. So it will also appear here once you've plugged it in. But the another thing with those keyboard, they require you to install a separate driver. It's not a plug and play. So that's just a disadvantage. So if they have an output, they will they usually appear here. And what you can do is you can send a master sync. So basically they they function like a um like in audio interface as well. So you play something from the computer um, then it, the signal will go back to that MIDI controller and it will play through the speakers, whichever speakers that was connected to that keyboard. And so, yeah, so the audio. And another thing is that this preview mixer track. Okay, let's go for the mixer. So let's, this preview mixer track is where the metronome will go. It's where all the preview samples will play. Wait. Okay, so let's find the browser. As you can see, we have these four dots right here, which means that the preview is on the master. But if I move this to track number two, to the insert number two rather, then it will play on the insert two. This is useful if you are recording. For example, you're, you're recording and you want your metronome to sound a little softer because it's too loud. 
you can adjust it there so what I want to do is I want to put this one on a separate track for example so I can see it on the screen whenever I arrange a complicated song I'll just go with this insert 125 I will wait I'll route it first to 125 okay then I will dock this one to the right so it will never be lost on the mixer window whenever I scroll down here so yeah and under the audio settings you also have the option to click smart disable this will disable all of the effects on the insert once you turn this thing off right here wait let's put a plug in here so you can see that it will lit up once it active right there for example this one is activated and you turn this off this plugin right here will automatically be disabled right so it will save some CPU you can read it here right may increase CPU performance see so under under the general settings we discussed this earlier but I'll just explain it further and here we have we have the option to change how things move right how things move smoothly or roughly for now I like my mixer or I like my playlist to move smoothly that's why I want it this way so yeah that's just my preference but it requires you to restart FL studio right so you have the option to make things even more smoother with this ultra smooth icon right here so yeah you have the option to detach all the plugins later on on the arrangement side of things we are going to discuss about this detach thing okay so next thing is the file menu in this file menu you have the option to save an existing project for example I've been working on this project for like five hours and I'm so afraid that it will crash FL Studio will crash once I open a faulty plugin so you'd, you'd better set this to regular every five minutes because unlike any other DAW FL Studio this is one thing that I don't like about FL once you once the FL Studio crashes then it will never recall the previous thing that you did with it like Ableton Live, Studio One, Cubase, once, you, once the software crashes, then it will automatically recall the previous thing that you did with it. So yeah, we have to adjust with FL Studio's flaws. And right here, you can manage some plugin. So as you can see, you have an option to scan your plugin. Right now, it's still loading because I, I think I have at least 300 third-party plugins you can find plugins you can you can scan plugins right this plugin manager right here will show you all the plugins that you've installed for the past few years another thing here is that you can add um, a sample for folder for example this one right here I added this folder right here my sample packs right so I just added the location right here. You can also add a new one. Oh, can add a new one here. As many as you can. I just added the root folders so it will carry everything underneath it. So here's everything. All right, so let's go with the project settings. So in the project settings, you have the option to save everything that you've worked on in a certain folder. For example, if I save this on the desktop, I create a new folder and I name it um, tutorial. Okay, so everything that I am going to, uh, wait, I'll save this first. Everything that I'll do on this project, for example, I record audio, I record, maybe I'll export MIDI, or maybe I froze an audio, then it will go to that folder. So the next time that this project loads up, 
it reads up all of the data on that specific folder. And I think this is the last one, the project information. You have, if you're collaborating with an artist or with a, some other producer, you can then you can then put all the informations right here. Because if you're collaborating with people who also uses the same software, then they will also see this once you gave them the actual project file. For example, I'll name this project um, cool tutorial and the author is me in this case my name is Brandon J and let's say my genre is um, trans love trans I'll put some comments in it for example I want my other producer to do this for me because I can do this add some guitar add some guitar or add more punch on the kick so then we we will work it out there and the cool thing about this right here is you can put your SoundCloud link or your Facebook page link or your YouTube link so it's good to you know it's better if you're promoting your page or if you're promoting yourself as an artist you'll also find the information right here and this information at the very bottom is the information about how long we've been working on a project right now this one was created 30 minutes ago 37 to be exact by the way and it also shows you a bunch of information about how many plugins that you've used and stuff and yeah that's pretty much it about settings and configuration of FL other settings might not be that necessary but you can explore it on your own such as we have the setting to change the waveform we have the settings to remove all the routing cables see there's no routing cable but if i revert that action you can see that there's a routing cable right there so this is all optional you can do this if you want to it will depend on your taste you can change the color of the grid if you wanted to so yeah and it's a good thing for you guys to know that something exists in fl such as these settings these might be optional for now but maybe in the future it might come in handy so i think it's a wrap so for the next video we will now start with the actual arrangement process we will go further more into discussion with the things that we've discussed previously with the interface we will dive in deeply to our more technical stuff. So I guess I'll see you guys there.